Today we're talking about Golden Myrrh by Hermede Hildozegnia. Hi and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about a fragrance that was launched for Harrods um, and it did come out in 2021. Uh, it's not certain if it's still available at Harrods but it is available in a lot of American discounted outlets. So it is a brand that is by the Estee Lauder groups. So if you know Estee Lauder they are a big conglomerate that is American. And they manufacture brands such as Tommy, Michael Kors, Jo Malone, Hermeda Hilozegna, uh, Frederick Mall, Tom Ford. Um, so it, they have a pretty big roster essentially when it comes to making fragrances. Oh, and Le Labo. So the fragrance that we're talking about today is by the brand of Hermeda Hilozegna. It is this guy here, beautiful bottle, and it is called Golden Myrrh. Now and it comes in this beautiful packaging. So when you purchase the fragrance, it does come in a box like this. So then this is the box that it comes inside. Like I said, it is like a grainy calfskin leather texturized thing. It's not real leather. I don't know why I smelled it like a creep, sorry. But it's not real leather, but it does have that nice feel. So it's not your cardboard typical box. Again, this fragrance is launched as a limited edition, so it might not be available, and if you do find it, I would definitely recommend to get your hands on it. But once you open it, it has two latches at the back, or hinges, and it sits right there, very snug. This is also removable, and if you remove this guy, you can actually keep the box for storage. And it says Hermede Hilozegna. So with it being Hermede Hilozegna, it is an Italian brand. Uh, this is the Incenza line, so he does make other fragrances like uh, the Womo and Womo, I believe it's called Intense, and a couple of other ones that are fairly popular. But this is supposed to be like his private line. The private line is essentially, you know, the step up, you know, from the regular signature brands that you can get at your local department store. So a little bit look into the actual packaging. It has the traditional, if you've ever seen it at a Zegnia store, they tend to have like these little lines all across of it, really cool, modern, sleek design. Uh, Zegnia is really, really famous for their suit making and their tailoring, so that is something they're big into. So clean cut lines, you know, really represents the actual fragrance. This is a little plaque in the front that comes in the box. It is not real metal, it's like a plastic metal imitation. And at the bottom you have all the packaging or the fragrance information on it. Spray this. Mmm. So it does smell really, really good. now. This fragrance is a fragrance that if you are into spices, if you are into incense, and if you're into oud, it's going to be right up your, you know, alley. Because it is a incense-y, peppery type of fragrance. But it's not a fragrance that is way too much. It has this fresh element to it that comes in in the back. So while it does have those nice elements of being, you know, a spicy, seductive, deep fragrance, it has those nice remnants of being a clean, you know, soft fragrance, uh, which I feel like it's a really, 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 really nice, you know, touch that they put into it because typically you get your fragrances that are, you know, more on the spicy side and they're either way too much or they're way too deep. And this one really, really balances out. So I think it's the note composition in this one that, you know, really, really brings it out to the forefront. It is really nice, but if you are not a, fr a fan of frankincense, you will definitely have problems with this one. When I first purchased this bottle, it was one of those things that I was like, this is amazing, this is great, and then it instantly reminded me of the incenses burnt in a Catholic church. Um, but it's not necessarily really, really, really top-heavy because it does change, it does develop, it does become its own fragrance and it's incredibly long lasting if by the way I didn't say it is an eau de parfum um so let's go down by the note so your top notes are going to be juniper pink pepper and frankincense so like I said that frankincense is going to be at the top but it does dissipate it does stay throughout the entire composition 
but it dissipates. It doesn't stay that strong. It doesn't, you know, get really in your face. Um, just upon that first spray, it's like, whew, and then it just, you know, kind of fizzles out, but it's still there. It's like, you know, a really nice, it's a really nice piece of a fragrance, essentially. As your heart notes, you're gonna have amber, sandalwood, and myrrh. So that sandalwood gives really, really all that creaminess in the er, myrrh, <laughs> the er, <laughs> The myrrh really balances out the fragrance as well. So they give this fragrance a woody, but you know, they give this fragrance a creaminess to it, which really, really dials back the spices. So although it's a spice intensive fragrance, it is a woody fragrance. It does have that creamy lectonic type quality to it, which really, really, really resonates because it's not gonna be too much. It's not gonna be too in your face, but it's gonna be that right amount that you really, really want to get a fragrance. You know, that's, wearable so typically people that you know are new to fragrance don't want to get fragrances that are either spice intensive or they have too many woods because they're a little they're a little intimidating you know because if your nose is not trained for it you tend to be like oh this smells like my grandpa or oh this is way too strong and this fragrance really really just I don't know blends it out really nicely with these notes and in the base you're gonna get cystus absolute patchouli and oud so that oud really, really comes out at the end of play, but it's such a great mixture with the actual incense. Um, they really kind of, you know, go well together, but it's not, like I said, a really, really sharp or dry oud. It's a creamy lectonic oud. It's a synthetic one. You can definitely tell when they're synthetic and more westernized oud, but it's a good one. It's not one that's going to be, you know, too floral intensive. You know, the patchouli really gives you that earthiness as well. So like I said, all these notes really, really create such a great fragrance because while it is something that, you know, would be considered a quote unquote more mature of a fragrance, it does give you that, you know, translucency to it as well. So it's not super heavy, but it has the performance. So it has the performance. It's not too heavy on the skin. It performs on the skin, but at the same time, it's not going to be too overbearing. This is a fragrance that you can wear either winter, spring, summer, whatever season. It is very versatile when it comes into that regard because like I said, it's not gonna be too heavy, it's not gonna be too light. So it has that really great, you know, balance to the fragrance itself. With that being said, it's it's a fresh fragrance without having any bergamot or any musk or anything like that, which is really cool. And I think that the way that they did that is by grabbing these earthy, wet type of tones and really added it to it. So it's really, to me, kind of smells like if you were to be in the woods and it rains and after it rains you smell all these you know wet woods and you know all these beautiful flowers around but there is no flower <laughs> we'll put you like this could be a flower but i don't know it's just a really great masterpiece to me i wish they would have launched it as a permanent edition because i think it would have been fairly successful uh based on looking at their other fragrances in the incenza line a lot of the other fragrances tend to be you know more geared towards like I don't know how to describe it, but aquatic scents. So you have the Neroli, the Bergamot in this line. And uh, with this one, they definitely captivated me because it's it's one of those that has a very unique stance to it, uh, but it also has, you know, I don't know, it's, it's unique. Um, it's not gonna be super unique where you're like, oh, I can't wear this. You know, people might ask me what the hell I'm wearing and I might offend someone at the office because you know how people are nowadays. Can't wear a fragrance because <coughs> they're allergic. Uh, some of them aren't. Uh, anywho, um, yeah, it, it is one of those that it is pretty well received by many people. People do tend to like it. People do tend to say, hmm, smells good. Uh, and there's going to be always your critic out there that's not going to like it. So yeah. Is this is a 100 ml, 3.4 ounce bottle. It does retail according to Harris's website for 233 which is not bad, actually, because typically your oud fragrances are going to be pretty high up there in cost, uh, you know, and you're usually going to get a 1.7 ounce for around this price for even more expensive. So you get 233 and you get a full size big guy. So that's the nice thing about this one. Uh, just for reference, like I said, I did purchase mine at the Estee Lauder Cosmetics Company store, which is the Estee Lauder outlet, which is their parent company outlet. And that store's kind of hit or miss. You'll definitely walk in there and sometimes get really great deals. And sometimes you'll walk in and they'll, they'll have absolute crap. Um, 
But yes, they did happen to have this one and I did scoop up a couple of bottles because it is limited edition and it's probably not gonna get manufactured again. Uh, especially because this fragrance line is not very popular, I've noticed. I've, I've looked at it for a long time. I've kept my eye on it, but it doesn't seem like anyone tends to really even care about it, so. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video. Do comment below to see what you guys wanna watch. And also subscribe and hit the bell notification wherever they are. I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this, boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate everyone's support. Uh, I appreciate everyone that has subscribed. I do see that there's been quite a bit of new subscribers, which is pretty exciting. Um, like I said, I'm still new to this, so it's a little scary. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. It really means a lot. And I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. And